going to talk a little bit about the modification that I did to my uh, uh, Smittybilt 2781 air compressor. This is that 12 volt uh, uh, air compressor that I use uh, in my 4Runner when I need to air down. I also take it uh, in the truck camper to uh, you know do the tires, the dually tires, and also the uh, airbags uh, on the truck as well. So uh, on this modification, I did two things uh, to this air compressor. Number one, um, this the the air hoses and the connections on the air compressor are the Japanese style. Uh, they're just a little bit different than the you know your standard SAE uh, style connection. I've got a couple of different ones here. This is the um, the standard connection. If you can see how that is, and then this is the Japan style, uh, Japanese style. So you can see the difference. Um, this style won't work with your, your standard uh, air hoses. So I want to swap this connection out for one of these guys. And um, actually I'm going to use um, the, uh, the connection that I'm going to use is actually going to be a female connector. But I've got the uh, eighth inch or sorry, the uh, quarter inch uh, adapter for, you know, this uh, quarter inch hose uh, to thread into my standard uh, air connection there, the female air connection. So on this modification, all I need to do is, uh, is just cut the hose right here at the connector uh, or at this fitting, the Japanese fitting, and then um, replace it with with uh, this one here. All right, so the main reason why I'm swapping this connection out um, for the, uh, the female standard connector is I wanna have uh, a little bit more versatility in what I can use with it. My, my air chuck for my dually uh, and also my standard air chuck for the Forerunner, the shorter one. This is the extended one uh, for the duallys. It's got the dual. Um, nozzles there plus it's the extended one so I can reach back in there uh, to get to the inside dually uh, but it's got it's got the standard male connector there and yeah I could have swapped this out uh, for the Japanese style um, female connector uh, for this to fit into however I wanted to have the option of using some of my other accessories so you know my other airlines extend, extended extended uh, hoses and things like that and it was just a little bit more convenient to for me to swap out to the female style on the hose instead of mess with this. All right, so what I'm going to do first is just cut this line. I need to pull the spring piece back. This is just a little spring, like a tension relief spring. You take that off. So I can take this and just with a pair of cutters or you can use the utility knife, just cut it real close so you don't lose you know a bunch of hose any length of your hose take that off it gives you a nice clean connection or a nice clean cut make sure that uh, you've got your your spring tension relief there I've got the uh, the Teflon uh, thread seal already on there I'll go ahead and push this guy on Let's give it a little bit of a little bit of lubrication on there and this should fit all the way in there if it doesn't fit real easy uh, you can you can slightly heat up this air hose with a hairdryer don't use a heat gun uh, just use a just use a hairdryer on like medium setting uh, if if it doesn't go on real easy this seems to be going on pretty easy though you want it to fit all the way up to the to the end of the uh, threaded fitting here, or the barbed fitting. Okay, so once you've got the hose pushed all the way on, you can push the uh, tension spring all the way up over the top of that. And if you want to, you can take your, your hose clamp and squeeze down on that connection. I'm actually going to remove this. I don't need this extra hose clamp on there. This is this fitting's on there super tight with that barbed 
fitting. If you feel the need to have that extra security, go ahead and put your hose clamp on, tighten it down. All right, so now we can take our female standard connection and thread that on here. Like I said, we've already got this uh, pre-coated with the Teflon seal. Just a couple of winds around the threads will do. And then we'll just give this a good snug. All right, just make sure that's good and snug. Now we can uh, test for leaks. All right, so nice and tidy connection there. Check for leaks, no air leaks around the seals or at the hose connection there. And now I can fit my standard air chuck into the air hose that goes to the air compressor. I can now use any of my other accessories, a longer air hose, uh, my other air chuck for the Forerunner. And another reason why I wanted to you know, swap out to be able to use my standard air chuck, the, the uh, air nozzle that they give you with the Smittybilt, it's fine for you know, standard tires. I've got the dually truck, so I need to be able to get into that inside dually. And you really can't do that with this. It's really difficult to get this, this little threaded connection on the valve stem. And the gauge is really close to that, and it doesn't really fit through the, through the wheel, uh, the spoke very well. And it's, of course, has the uh, Japan style, the Japanese style connection on there. So I wanted to get rid of this. I don't need this. So that's gone due to this air compressor is change out the clamp style connections, the battery terminal clamp connections, positive, your positive and your negative, to the Anderson style connector. And I'll go over to the truck in just a little bit and show you what I did there. But I just cut the clamp wires and you know as close as I could get to the to the uh, end there and then I stripped the wires back and wired in a 10 gauge uh, Anderson positive and negative with the Anderson power pole quick connector and shrink wrap uh, while well, I soldered and then shrink uh, heat shrinked and then wrapped in electrical tape so that's a good strong tight connection watertight and uh, and super strong that's not coming off it also gave me another uh, 14 inches of power lead so I'll put in the description uh, below this video uh, links to the the Anderson power pole connectors and the wire. This is the 10 gauge wire. They have uh, 30 amp connectors, they have 45 amp connectors, and then they also have the 15 amp connectors. These are actually the 45 amp connectors because this air compressor, uh, it says on here max amp draw 45 amps. I wanted to make sure I covered my, my, uh, my bases there as far as draw. It would probably hold the 30 amp just fine. The I'll show you over at the truck, the fuse, the inline fuse that I put on the truck lead that goes out is a 30 amp lead, a 30 amp fuse, automotive style. So that'll pop before you know anything else uh, in the air compressor. Now the air compressor does have a built-in breaker here. So you know it'll, it'll trigger that uh, as a fail safe. But again, I'll put all the links uh, below uh, in the description here for this wire. This is really good stuff. Good high quality connections. And um, I'll show you that they're waterproof as well. All right, so we're out here at the truck. And uh, what I did on the truck here, let me pop the hood. Got this... Uh, positive and negative lead coming off of the battery, one of the batteries in the truck. Got my 
30 amp automotive style fuse in line on the positive side. Around my 10 gauge wire through the frame bracing in the front and then out the grill I've got my other Anderson connector. And this has a, uh, a waterproof cap on it so you can just pull this waterproof cap off just like that. Get a little bit closer shot here. You can see, so normally this would just fit back in here with the cap on. I can pull that out around the 10 gauge wire through. Got my 30 amp fuse and the positive, just simple positive and negative wiring out to the Anderson connector. All right, so the cool thing about this is I've got my air compressor down on the ground there. Got the modified power cord with the Anderson connector on this end. These are locking connectors. There's only one way to hook it up, black to black, red to red. Slide these right in and it locks in place. So now my air compressor is hooked up. And of course, I can have the hood closed. I don't have to pop the hood to do any of this. When I'm done, just disconnect the power cord, put my waterproof connector back on, and then push it back into the grill. And that's uh, nice and tidy, it's waterproof, and uh, when I need to use it again, it's there. Alright, so they do recommend that you have your vehicle running while you're using the air compressor, and that's just so your alternator can generate uh, you know what the uh, batteries are using for the air compressor now, like I said uh, earlier this is a, a 45 amp draw maximum so if you're ever you know creating that much draw if you're running it off a lot you want to have your vehicle motor running so you're charging your batteries at the same time during use all right so I'll try to get this all in one shot I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck and uh, I'll get a air reading on this front tire I think it's at about 65 psi I want to time to see how long it takes to get it back up to 80 psi see how long it takes on one shot to get from 65 to 80 65 PSI Seventy PSI. Seventy five PSI.
80 PSI. Alright, so I got the truck shut off. I can disconnect my power. Put my waterproof cap back on. And tuck that back in the grill. And that's it. The uh, Smitty built uh, model 2781. It is a uh, 150 psi maximum. It's 5.65 uh, CFM. So most of your air compressors are right around 2, uh, 1.8 1, 1 to 2 CFM. Even the higher end Viair, uh, like the 450 RV. That's only about a 2.5 CFM. So this has it beat. Uh, this has a about a 60% duty cycle, which is really good for a, a lightweight, compact air compressor. Uh, it'll run for about 40 minutes nonstop uh, before it'll you know trip the uh, trip the built-in circuit breaker there. It's uh, all metal casing. It's a single piston system, and uh, all of the hardware and connections are all really nice. It's uh, nicely built. It's got the, uh, you know, the, the foot pad here with uh, rubber feet on the bottom, and it's just uh, a nicely built air compressor. So again, the uh, Smitty built uh, 2781. It's uh, been working out great for me. I've used it quite a bit, and uh, another thing to note would be this handle. Some of, some of the air compressors that I've used in the past, the, the handle and the casing get super hot. It'll, it'll burn your hand just by touching it in a split second. This has a, um, a gun barrel style uh, fitting. So over the top of the handle, it stays nice and cool. These fittings will get hot, but if you keep your hand on the handle itself, uh, you won't burn yourself. So it's a nice added feature there to have this uh, heat. It's like a heat sink uh, style handle. Uh, I ran this for just a few minutes. None of these fittings are hot. Uh, they're you know slightly warm, but they're not hot to the touch. Give you a uh, little bit closer view of the handle and all the hardware and fittings. The rubber pad, uh, rubber feet on the bottom of the uh, of the stand, the pad there. Uh, nice connections. There's your uh, your breaker right there and your on-off power switch. Uh, this weighs in at about uh, six pounds, so it's not uh, you know super lightweight, but it's it's not so heavy that uh, you know you can't carry it around the truck while you're airing up. Uh, does come with a 25 foot hose. Um, you've got an extra two feet with the lead that comes out of the air compressor and of course you can extend your your hose your air hose just by you know adding on another 25 feet or whatever size sections uh, extensions that you have uh, air hose that you carry with you uh, with this modification that I did you can hook up your standard air chucks uh, any any other uh, standard fittings or accessories that you use well, with your regular air compressor so you know air nozzles if you use the you know the air gun style uh, inflator uh, you can use all that with this uh, modification hopefully that that modification you know helps make this air compressor for you what it is for me and that is just the ultimate uh, air compressor for off-road and RVing all right so I'm out here in the garage and here's the uh, original packaging. I'll just shoot some of the specs. Uh, you can pause this to read the specs and uh, show you the connections that it comes with, all the accessories that it comes with. A little sneak peek of my new uh, camping chainsaw there. I'm going to do a review of this and some demonstrations pretty soon. It's a one-year warranty. A little instruction booklet that it comes with. One other thing I wanted to mention were these Milton, uh, the air chuck, the extended air chuck, and the uh, the air gauge, the uh, service gauge. These are USA made uh, by Milton. 
They are uh, not uh, super expensive. They're not on the low end by any stretch. They're super high quality and uh, very accurate. So if you're looking for a good, uh, super durable uh, gauge, they have them in the non-extended model, but also these longer extended models for uh, dually owners. So I'll put lo uh, links in the uh, video description below for these as well. Uh, they're available on Amazon. They're under $20. I think that this one was about uh, oh, 12 or $13, so not super expensive. R pretty much on, poor, on par with some of the other uh, cheaper models, uh, less durable models. But these are all made in the USA and um, really high quality stuff here and uh, just dead accurate. A lot of the truck drivers use these and uh, they swear by them. So I purchased my air compressor uh, on Amazon. It was on sale. I purchased that air compressor for $120 with free shipping, which is an extremely good deal. The comparable air compressor from Viair, which is the 450 RV, runs about $280, $279, uh, to, uh, 289 depending on what uh, seller you purchase it from. I think it's every bit as good, if not better, especially with these modifications that I've done. Of course, you could do these modifications to any air compressor if you wanted to have those Anderson Quick Connects. You can, you know, wire that up, uh, clip the connections on your original air compressor uh, battery terminal clamps, and just wire in your Anderson connectors to that. That in itself is a very conven uh, convenient modification. I would do that regardless. But I'm really happy with that air compressor. It, so far, it's been really durable. It hasn't let me down. It hasn't uh, stopped. I haven't even run it long enough for the um, breaker to the built-in uh, circuit breaker to trigger and shut it down. So I have uh, run it for about 15 minutes and uh, in one session and felt the wires, the 10-gauge uh, Anderson wires, and while they did feel slightly warm, they were not hot. So I know that I've got uh, plenty of wire there, 10 gauge is plenty for that uh, 45 amp air compressor. And again, with the 30 amp automotive style fuse in line on that uh, plug that I wired into the truck, that will, that'll fail first before anything else does. So I hope this video kind of helps you out uh, maybe deciding on an air compressor if you're thinking about the Smitty Built 2781. I really like that air compressor. Uh, it was not really the price was the deciding factor, but some of the reviews that I've read on the Jeep forums and uh, some of the other off-road forums that I that I read, um, they've everybody that uh, uses this air compressor has had great luck with it. Doesn't let them down. It's fast and um, it, it has that 150 PSI uh, working range, so, and a little bit longer duty cycle than some of the other ones. Uh, if you have any questions on the air compressor or uh, anything else that I've done in this video, shoot me a comment uh, below or any questions uh, below in the description, and I'll try to get those answered uh, the best that I can. So hopefully this video helps you out, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.